Hello, I'm High Hill Knight. Welcome to my channel. This video presents a listing of bizarre, weird things that have happened within the less than 30 days of President Donald Trump's administration. It's not a top 10 list. It's not a, a worst offense list. It's not even chronological order. It's simply 10 bizarre things that have happened within the less than 30 days of his administration. But let me first say that Yes, I don't have a very favorable opinion of the president. I had a very unfavorable opinion while he was a candidate, and I have an even less favorable opinion now. He has failed to establish trust credit. His administration has failed to establish trust credit. By trust credit, I mean the idea that you have faith in your elected officials, even if they make mistakes or you don't agree with some of their decisions or policies. For instance, when President Obama claimed that if you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor. I figured he was either lying or didn't understand some basic business, but I had trust credit with him. When President Bush wanted to go to war with Saddam Hussein, I knew that Saddam wasn't directly responsible for 9-11, but I understood that he was an overall threat to the nation, and his administration presented what at the time was believed credible evidence of weapons of mass destruction. So there was that trust credit. And President Clinton, who I currently refer to often as the living embodiment of why sexual harassment laws exist, he had trust credit with me. Even when he tried to say, well, it all depends what the definition of is, is, <laughs> he managed to still uh, keep some level of trust credit with me and the nation. Donald Trump, his credit is so bad that there was international protests the day after his inauguration, and there are more protests and demonstrations being planned. Some of the things that he and his people do are just so bizarre or heinous or wrong that you can't blame the media, you can't blame biasness, you can't blame politics. You can just blame those folks within his administration and the man himself. So here are 10 things that have happened Remember, less than 30 days of his administration, and I'll explain more after I give the list. Number one, Trump insulted civil rights icon Representative John Lewis on the eve of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day, claiming that he was all talk. He also insulted John Lewis's district based on the stereotype that since it's a predominantly black area, that it must be in horrible shape, falling apart, and crime infested. Number two, Trump referred to James Robart, the federal judge that suspended the president's travel ban executive order, as a so-called judge. Robart, who was appointed by George W. Bush, was confirmed almost unanimously by both parties, and has served his position for over a decade, got insulted by Trump, a man who is less than a month into his first ever government job. Bonus item, this was done within days of Trump announcing his choice for the Supreme Court. Our president makes a decision about a Supreme Court nominee one moment and besmirch a federal judge for counteracting his executive order another moment. Does our president actually comprehend how our system of checks and balances actually works? Number three, Trump failed to mention Jews on International Holocaust Remembrance Day. It would have been less damaging if he had simply forgotten or had overlooked the day and said nothing. It could have been ranked up to amateur experience. Instead, the White House gave a statement about the special day. It's bad enough that Jews were not mentioned by name in the statement. If you actually read the statement, it is so absurdly generic, the message could apply to just about any tragic historical event. I'm serious. The statement was three paragraphs long, each with two sentences. The word Holocaust is in the first sentence. The word Nazi is in the second sentence. Those are the only things that link the press release to Remembrance Day. As a third generation educator, I bet good money that the message was a standard composition akin to the infamous Future Endeavors press release by World Wrestling Entertainment. If you read only the second and third paragraphs, you'd have no idea of knowing if the statement was about the Holocaust or one of the world wars, or the 9-11 tragedy, 
or the victim of Superman and General Zod's fight in the movie Man of Steel. It's that generic. Bonus item, a few weeks later, at his first solo press conference, when a reporter asked President Trump about Jewish issues, Trump claimed to be the least anti-Semitic person you'll ever meet. Maybe that's why the White House issued such an obviously generic statement on Remembrance Day. The president doesn't hate Jewish people or Jewish history. He just doesn't care enough to give any thoughts about them, not even on their own international tribute event. Number four, Trump refused to honor the refugee agreement with Australia, and he hung up on the leader of Australia. One of our nation's allies, he hung up on one of the nation's allies. The White House claimed that the president was fatigued that afternoon and in the conversation abruptly. Hmm, I thought Hillary Clinton was supposed to be the candidate that didn't have the stamina for the presidency. Number five, Trump calls CNN fake news. In fact, he's begun to refer to most media that don't constantly paint him and his administration favorably as fake news. Fake news is quickly replacing you're fired as his catchphrase. Of course, he still loves Fox News. He thinks Fox News treats him fairly. Well, even that network has to dismiss or refute several of the president's mistakes, lies, and rhetoric. If Fox News has to occasionally shine a light on the administration's misdeeds, then I guess it's only a matter of time until Trump considers the only real news is his personal Twitter account. Bonus item, President Trump continues to want to be BFFs with President Putin. When Bill O'Reilly of Fox News pointed out that Putin was a killer, our sitting president response was, a lot of killers, we got a lot of killers. What, you think our country's so innocent? The one time Trump actually makes a completely true statement is in besmirchment of the United States. Number six. Trump claims to despise fake news, but he and his administration certainly enjoy spreading false information. The administration forced press secretary Sean Spicer and various spokespeople to insist that the media misled reports about the attendance of Trump's inauguration, despite clear photographic evidence of the contrary. Spicer said that the inauguration was the biggest audience to ever witness an inauguration Period. To be fair, he based that claim on the potential television and internet viewership of the event. Hence, the clever use of the word witness instead of attended. Number seven, continuing on the administration's false information, the White House released a list of terrorist events that it claims the media either failed to report or did not cover properly. That list featured numerous terrorist attacks that were covered by all major media outlets, like the Orlando Pulse nightclub shooting from last year. Number eight, more false information by the Trump administration and allegedly non-reported terrorist attacks. Advisor to the president, Kelly Ann Conway, conducted three interviews in which she claimed that the media didn't cover the Bowling Green massacre. The media didn't cover that terrorist attack because no such event actually happened. When it was revealed that there was no such thing as the Bowling Green Massacre, Mrs. Conway retracted her statements, her defense being that she simply misspoke. Bonus item! Kelly and Conway accidentally broke the law by publicly endorsing Ivanka Trump merchandise. It was an amateur mistake. Still, it wasn't helpful for either her reputation or the administration. Bonus, bonus item, Kelly Ann Conway introduced a new term to the English vocabulary, alternative facts. Number nine, National Security Advisor Michael Flynn was either fired or resigned, depending on which source you review, because he might have discussed sanctions with representatives of Russia and he lied to the Vice President Mike Pence about whether or not he conducted such discussions. The White House claims that the administration asked for Flynn's resignation because his actions lost the trust of the president. Despite the termination, President Trump continued to say marvelous things about Flynn and claimed that the media 
has treated Finn unfairly. Hmm. In less than 30 days of the administration, the National Security Advisor lost his job over national security matters. How exactly is the media supposed to be fair about covering such an occurrence? Number 10. Trump still firmly believes that 3 to 5 million people managed to vote against him illegally. Yes, the voter registration features millions of people that are listed in more than one state or are deceased. However, there have been numerous investigations by various entities that prove how virtually non-existent voter fraud has been over the past few decades. There is also the logistical improbability that a person could vote at more than one location within the same day and get away with this. There's also the logistical absurdity that of those millions of illegal votes, none of them were granted in favor of Donald Trump. Not even the multi-registered Republican and independent voters that are in his political inner circle or his own daughter, Tiffany. Millions of illegal votes, none of them for him? That is what our current President of the United States firmly believes. The information in this video was originally part of another video, but that video was taking so long that I decided to cut the information and make it his own presentation. But then after I saved that information, the following day the National Security Advisor resigned or was fired or whatever, so I knew I had to add that. But the list was now super long, so I decided, okay, let me condense everything into 10 items, but still add those bonus segments because there are still some things that were just had to be mentioned. In fact, with the whole voter fraud thing, there's now a new spokesperson that's going around saying now he knows firsthand that people will get bussed in from other states to vote illegally. Now, I don't know this person's name. I don't have the uh, facts information. And the reason why I don't have it is because I don't want to waste or lose any more time trying to research more things that this administration has done within the less than 30 days, okay? I wanted to get this video out there. So that's why it's not a top 10 list. It's not in, in chronological order. It's just 10 bizarre things along with bonus items about this administration that has ruined and ruined and ruined the trust credit with the American people and with me. All those things that I listed, they're not media bias, they're not political bias, that's not hating on hating, that's the administration, that's President Trump saying and doing things on their own. It's less than 30 days and it's just craziness wall to wall. But because there is media bias, if you know positive things that the administration has done, if you know good things that the administration has done, then please share them. Yeah, I want to know. Honestly, I do. I want to raise this credit, okay? It's less than 30 days. I can't get any much lower over the next four years. I might go insane and become one of those haters that hate for hate. No, I don't want to do that. So if you know some positive things that the administration has done since their time in office, please share them. And speaking of sharing, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you very, very much for watching. I'm High No Knight. And remember, find inspiration everywhere.